Tell me, are we ready? You're gonna get the best out of somebody. Were you that way when you played? Everybody talk, square up the ball. My job is to challenge our team to be the best that they can be. Since 100 wins at the next First of all, let me congratulate you on uh, your 100th win as a Knicks head coach. But this ain't the first time you've done that. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're a veteran in that sort of thing. It's a byproduct of being old. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, no. But being I, old and being able to win. I appreciate your kind words. Being old it's, and being able to win, because we know what that's all about. Yeah, it's meaningful to me from, from the standpoint of, obviously it's a byproduct of the team and the organization and a lot of people working together. Uh, but growing up, in Connecticut and being a Knicks fan and knowing what the Knicks mean to uh, the city. Uh, it's just, I'm very appreciative to be the coach here. You grew up a Knicks fan, so what was it like when Leon Rose called you and told you you were gonna be the Knicks head coach? Well, I, I was really, it, it was surreal to be honest with you. And uh, my dad grew up uh, in Connecticut as well. And he was a Knicks fan. He went to St. Bonaventure and there were ties from uh, St. Bonaventure with Eddie Donovan and the Knicks. So I followed Bob Lanier at St. Bonaventure, and then we followed the Knicks were our team. So Walt Frazier, Willis Reed, Bill Bradley, Dave DeBusher, Dick Barnett, Phil Jackson, all those guys, those were guys that, you know, as a kid, uh, that team was so special, and every it, they embodied basketball in New York City in a big-time way. The beauty that I remember seeing also was the way they played as a team. Yeah. I mean, they had about eight dudes that all of them could yeah. play, and they all played so well together. That was like the epitome of basketball. Yeah, there's no question. I think, and their willingness to sacrifice. Like everyone would talk about how Walt and, and Earl couldn't play together. Well, they did. Yeah, and they did. They all, and, and they could beat you a lot of different ways. They, they played great defense. They played great offense. They moved without the ball. Everyone talked about Bradley, the way he moved, the busher spreading you out. Willis was, you know, the captain, and but they they could beat you with the pass, you know, and no one really cared how many points they scored. They just cared that they won. Yeah. And so I think everyone fell in love with that team. And, and, and they were fundamentally great. Oh, uh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> they really were. Yeah, the, the team was special. In my mind, if I had a chance to play in New York, that would be all the inspiration I'd need on a nightly basis. Because I know I got respect to fans, they're expecting that, and it's something that would drive me, and I know that it drives you as the coach too, but that's just a wonderful feeling. You'd much rather be doing that than be somewhere else where, eh, maybe. It, it, there's so much passion from the fan base, and there's a competitive spirit to New York City, and everything from the minute you get up in the morning to when you go to bed at night, you're fighting for something. And I think there's an appreciation when there's a willingness to sacrifice for the greater good, for the team, for the organization, for the city. Uh, and that's what I, when I look back on, on our teams in the 90s, yes, on three. One, two, three. Yes. they embodied that. And I think the city fell in love with that team. And Madison Square Garden is alive. Can't be on the follow. Houston, wide open for three. Bang! And hopefully we can do that same thing. That's what we're striving towards. Uh, I think getting competitive people into the building, getting that toughness. Julius if we go out and play hard and play together, play smart, there's an appreciation for that. Five seconds remaining. Barrett brings it up. Barrett on the drive, goes inside. He throws it down. He throws it down. It's time. Every time I watch you, you embody that whole thing that New York, they're gonna play hard every night. I don't care what it is, you're going to play hard every night. Your teams do that, the whole thing. Every time, every place I've seen you coach, you bring that with you, is that you're gonna get the best out of somebody. Well, I appreciate that, and uh, I think I've been very fortunate throughout my career. I've been around a lot of great players, but I've also been exposed to a lot of great coaches and learned a lot from different people along the way. You learn from everybody and you want to move it forward. And I think you have a, a, you end up developing a good understanding of what it takes in this league, what it takes in the city. And I think it's, it takes a certain type of player to have success in New York City. There has to be a toughness to you, both mental and physical. Uh, there has to be a competitiveness to you. Uh, but there also has to be a willingness to sacrifice. 
Almost hooked, lost it. Randall dives on it. Ball still loose. Randall to Brunson. Brunson throws it down. What a turnaround here in the fourth quarter. I love coaching, period, but I love coaching in the garden. There's nothing like it. Uh, and also the, their understanding of the game. Like, and whether it's you know our team or the opposing, when someone makes a great play, they know. They know. And I think there's the ultimate appreciation for all-out effort. And that's how you're an extension of that. I love the players we have on our team because of the willingness to work. And uh, I see them getting better each day. And we have the right mix of veterans and young guys and guys that are in the middle. And we know how important it is to work as hard as we can each and every day. Is it also about extending the fact that of who you are? Like, yeah. who are you? How are you going to, how you, how do you, who are you? Who are you? How are you guys going to play? Yeah, like who we are, you know, what we value, mm -hmm. what's our culture and environment, what do we believe it takes to win, you know, what are the intangibles. Um, and I think to, for everyone to understand what that is. Yes. You know, each and every day. So if you walk into the gym, this is what we're doing. When we walk in, you've got to come in with the right attitude, the right approach, the right energy, the right thoughts about the team, and it's all about the team first. There are some of the guys that you've gone through and coached with, even uh, Van Gundy said it's something about your five core values. Rebound, defense, low turnovers, sharing the ball and using the paint, and passing and penetration. Are those your philosophical points yeah that's yeah that's who like I always think that if you walked into the gym you should be able to tell okay defend rebound low turnover inside out share the ball you know we say attack the rim along with it inside out so mm -hmm. that's what we want to do and that's what you've been doing here lately <laughs> yeah you know like our team is really uh, I'm proud of the way they've improved each and every day the way they their willingness to work for each other uh, we know we have a long way to go, and there's a lot of things that we have to improve upon. As I watch you coach, you're very intense. Were you that way when you played? Yeah. Because yeah, I, 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 read, I read somewhere where one of your boys said you guys were getting into him. So next thing you know, he couldn't find you, and you're beating up the dude down there for not playing right. <laughs> <laughs> Without even missing. He's like, wait a minute. Coach is gone. Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I wasn't a great player or anything, but I loved to compete. Yes. That was my, my thing. You know, and I loved all sports, so, um, but I love to compete. What is it that took you into coaching? Uh, you know, so when I played in college, like I knew I wasn't good enough to play in the pros, and I felt like this will be the next best thing, and I thought I'd be uh, a college coach. You know, I, I wanted to be a teacher and a coach. That's what my goal was, and I had aspirations to be a Division One head coach. And so when I first started out, I started going to clinics, working camps, and the first camp I ever worked was for Jim Beheim at Syracuse, and it's funny how life works. You know, 25 years later, I'm on the uh, Olympic staff with Jim. So, and you know, just, I had great, great fortune to be around, like a, a lot of great coaches. I don't know how I ended up in the pros, but it just, it happened. When you talk about players, uh, like a coach, that's a player's coach people get that kind of mixed up what that means I read here uh, about what you're saying about a player is like the ceiling of that player is irrelevant the potential is the point and I think that that's so many times that you could have a coach that's trying to make you be this but that ain't in you you do this much better and if you can do this every day you can really be a, you can help us here as in full of me expecting something that I shouldn't be expecting from you well I think you know you you want your players to play smart, okay? And everyone does something well. So play to your strengths, cover up your weaknesses, and help the team. Come on, man, come on. Come on. Get back, defense in transition. Protect the basket first. They're trying to catch it on the run. Protect the basket first. My job is also to challenge the player to, I think back to the best coaches I had, the best teachers I had, the best professors, they were demanding. So to stretch the player as far as he can be stretched, but also for him to understand, okay, these are my strengths. If I play to my strengths, cover up my weaknesses, that'll help us win. And so you try to get your team to do that. And I think every day, my, my job is to challenge our team, both mentally and physically, to be the best that they can be. Great hustle, good ball pressure. Get stopped, get it up the floor. 
We need everyone rebounding. Everybody rebound. What about accountability? Extremely important. Yeah, I think it's critical. I think, you know, our basic philosophy of, you know, look, praise, I think you can do publicly. Criticism, I think, is done privately. I think uh, everyone understanding what their job is, go out and do your job. And everyone's job is important on a team. And the roles may be different. Some guys may play more, some guys may play less. Some, some guys may get more shots, some guys may be more of a defender. Uh, but everyone's important, whether it's your 14th man, 15th man, that guy's role is important. That's important to your team. And ha every, everyone has to understand how important those guys are, how everyone on the team is important. And it's important for everyone to star in whatever role they may have. You know, as we sit here and talk, what's going through my head? Go New York, go New York, go, go New York, go New York. I appreciate you. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank always, you. Yeah, appreciate always, you. Man. Uh,